Hi, everyone, and welcome to Paper Pumpkin Week here on Creative Chelsea. Over the past couple days, I've shared some great card ideas that you can make with one set of supplies from this month's kit. Today, I'm sharing with you my fourth and last alternative idea using the October 2024 Paper Pumpkin Kit called Nest of Christmas. This kit creates a total of 10 Christmas cards, five in two different trifold designs. And if you're interested in seeing me unbox the kit and create these cards, you can click on the playlist and I'll also link my other alternatives to that playlist as well. The card that I'm sharing with you today uses the envelope. And you can see that we're using the designs on the front and then the flap of the envelope. And by fussy cutting them out and adding them to this card base, we can create this beautiful border element for our card. Each month I take the contents from the paper pumpkin kits and make alternative projects. My cards are easy to follow and can be made by both experienced or new paper crafters. You may need just a couple other products to complete them. You can follow along with me using supplies you already have or purchase any products you see me use from my online store. The link to all my products that I'm using is below in the description or on my blog, creativechelsea.com. Do you want more alternative card ideas for your paper pumpkin kit? Then subscribe to Paper Pumpkin and choose me as your demonstrator. I have joined with other Stampin' Up! demonstrators to design 8 to 10 more alternative ideas in a PDF tutorial, which includes both photos and instructions. My subscribers receive this PDF tutorial along with an exclusive designed card kit, all for free. So you don't want to miss out on that. So subscribe using the link below or selecting me as your demonstrator in your Paper Pumpkin account. Let's go ahead and get started with this beautiful card. So we're going to begin with the envelope. And do you remember at the beginning we cut the back off the envelope and we've been using that for all of our fussy cutting. And actually we still have one more piece to fussy cut from that. So hopefully you still have that laying around. Let me see if I can find mine really quick. Oh, here it is. Is this, is this all I have left of it? I might. So I might be able to squeeze a bird in there. Maybe not. Oh, maybe I will. We'll see. It might fit. Anyway, that's what we've been using um, for all of our fussy cutting this time. So today we're going to use the front and the flap. So to do that, we are going to trim. We've already trimmed the folded edges off of the three sides. And when you do that, you want to trim just the smallest amount off so that you can still see that beautiful golded green foiled edging. You don't want to remove that. So hopefully now I can cut this at four and a quarter so that it can fill my card base, which it looks like it will be fine. So four and a quarter is where we're going to cut to remove the flap. Okay. And next we're going to fussy cut out the branches on both the flap and that uh, front piece. And then I will give you the next step. If you measure the length of this front piece, you'll notice that it is larger than a card. And so we need to shorten it. So I've come up with a really great little trick to shorten it so that we can still see all four sides. And I think it still looks really good. So it doesn't look weird that we've cut it. Because that's something you do need to worry about when you cut like a border like this is, does it still look good? You know, do the images still work well together? That kind of thing. So when you cut this out, you do want it to be kind of close to the image. Okay, because we'll be adding it back into that section. So we're going to keep this, so hold on to that. And then over here. Oh, you know what? I just realized that we're not keeping any more of this flap. So I can easily use this white space here for my uh, cardinal for this card. So you want to keep this together. You don't need to separate any of these leaves. Okay. 
I really enjoyed all the alternatives I've made this week, and I hope you have too. If you like them, please leave a comment or make sure to subscribe to my channel. And so that just really helps YouTube show those cards to other people who might be interested as well. All right, so once we have that done, we are going to cut, I think this is just a half inch. So let me measure, yes. So with the top edge, this is the edge that has the piece that we removed, the shorter edge here. With that at sitting at a half inch, we're gonna go ahead and remove it. So the bottom edge here is sitting at about five and a one eighth. But this is at a half inch and that's what we're looking for. Okay. Oh, it's a little bit small, but that's okay. Maybe it was three fourths of an inch. No big deal. Let me measure that really quick so we can see what it is. Okay, so with my ruler, it looks like it's sitting at uh, five eighths of an inch. So it's just slightly larger than a half inch, okay? I think a half inch will be fine. We're just gonna move forward. Mistakes are sometimes made and that's just what happens, right? And sometimes mistakes turn into pleasant surprises. So for this card, we're going to add it to a card base of thick basic white cardstock. Looks like I need to score my card base before I can fold it. I always like scoring it. It makes for a nice clean fold line. So if you're having issues with your folds kind of looking jaggedy, then um, the reason is probably because you need to score it. Okay, let's begin by adding the larger piece first. So that should fit perfectly on the card front. So all edges should meet up and then use your bone folder to smooth out that liquid adhesive. Okay, then we're going to take the white piece that we cut and we're gonna add it to the top. And when you add this, just add the liquid adhesive to the top edge. And you also wanna make sure that the green foil line matches up with the previous piece. Okay, so only adhesive was at the top. That leaves this bottom flap open so that we can tuck in our leaf here. Okay, like that. So leave that open. Let's move over to the centerpiece. This is the green piece that came from the frame. This, let me show you the card. So this is the card. This is the piece that came from the inside. We're going to rotate it vertically and we're gonna stamp the leaf and the little dots in the corners. And we're gonna stamp them in the shaded spruce color that came in the kit. And you can really stamp these wherever you want. I'm gonna focus in the top left and bottom right corners. see. You know what, for this top one, I might just kind of do a couple going across the top since we're already having some leaves at the top. So this will just kind of be an extension of that design. Okay. So maybe something like that. Here you can kind of get a quick look. I brought this one down a little further because we have a larger die cut piece that will be, or that fussy cut piece will be covering up that corner. And then these are just kind of in the bottom right area. Then I've got those little dots and you can stamp these wherever you want. Okay. 
So it's just adding a little detail to that green piece. Okay, going back to our card, let's put this, let's put some dimensionals on the back here. I'm trying to remember. I think there are no dimensionals at the top, only at the bottom. So let's find the bottom. That's the one with the corners. And then when we add this, we'll want to just make sure that the card looks good. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit so that the border looks even on all sides. So maybe something like that. If we would have cut that to the five eighths, then it probably would line up with the top edge of that green piece there. Okay. And then we can glue this down. Just like that. And the reason we went with no dimensionals here is because we are going to add dimensionals on those die cut pieces. And so we're going to get dimension and then it's nice to add a little dimension here at the bottom. All right, let's start with this piece. This is the one we cut from the flap, a little adhesive at the top. And then we're going to slide that underneath here and bring it over so that we can just trim a little bit off of the edge. So we're going to cut, whoop, cut a little bit off. So flip it over and trim off any that's just coming off like that. And then the larger piece on those straight edges, go ahead and add some adhesive there. And that's going to go right back into that opening. Okay, so that should meet up with the areas that we did cut it out. So there's, it should meet up with the same shape from that area and that area. Okay. Do you see how now that totally covers up? and it looks so pretty. So let's just stick a couple dimensionals underneath just to add some depth to those pieces. Now you probably can see why we didn't add dimensionals to the um, top of that green piece here because that would just be too thick. Let's see if I can get one under here. Might be a little tight. Let's not worry about that one. We'll just stick it over here. Here we go. There. Okay, so that adds a nice amount of depth. And then we're going to stamp, color, and cut out our bird. So we've got that flap here. Just make sure you don't stamp it on that adhesive there. So flip it over and we're stamping in the Memento Black ink again. This is just the right ink to use when you're using blend markers. You don't want to use um, any other type of ink. This one works perfectly. I mean, you could use the colored watercolor ink. I've done that before, but um, if you're using black, if you want a black outline, this is the perfect color. And just to keep it, the colors really simple, I'm going to go with the red cardinal. So I'm going to start with my light red. This is real red. Just fill in the whole bird. And then you can go in with your dark red and add a little bit of shadow and detail. So I add, like to add a little bit of shadow here up at the head, head on the edge of the head. 
and definitely underneath there's a good shadow there and then a couple in the bird's wings and then for the beak just like we did before I'm going to use um, this is the light Cajun craze for the feet a little bit for the bottom and a little bit for the top I'll give you a close-up and then I'm going to start this time with the light daffodil delight and then maybe go in a little darker like that then you're going to fussy cut this out all right so there's my cardinal i'm going to wait well actually go ahead and put some dimensionals on the back and then you can add this to the top of your card I do want the top of the head to touch those branches. So something like that. And then you'll know where to add your greeting. Oh, and I'm just remembering that I've added twine around my card. So we're gonna have to figure out how to sneak that underneath now that we've already added that. But let's just keep going forward. We've got our Memento Black ink here, and I'm going to stamp Joyful Thoughts to You this season. You can choose any of the greetings if you want. Don't want to do this one, that's fine. Stamp it right in the center of one of the labels from the kit. And again, just using black to kind of highlight some of those black accents. Add this with dimensionals. And just place it right underneath the bird. Try to make it nice and straight. So it's going to look like that. And if you want to finish at this point, you can. Um, I do have this really beautiful shaded spruce ribbon that I wanted to add. Let's see what this is called really quickly. This is the Satin and Sheer Ribbon in Shaded Spruce. And I wanted to add this. So be, I wanted to add it right underneath the greeting. I thought it was a nice uh, little element. So let's start with a little adhesive underneath that I can tuck here and then fold this over and cut. Let's see, where's my other scissors? Let's cut it right about here. So let's remove this. So we'll add another little piece of adhesive on the other end and then we'll try to tuck that under Oop. okay that needs to come apart there we go sorry I got stuck to each other so if you hold on to that cardstock and then take something, you should be able to just fold it and have it stick to the back. Well, lots of noises happening here. So you'll get something that looks like that. And then if you want to, what I did is to get this beautiful real red ribbon, I took some white. And let's see, we've got that much and that much. So that is about eight inches and then if you want to add more I don't quite have enough here let me grab another roll so I'm going to go with about 20 inches of this twine well no I think I probably only need 18 so we'll go with 18 inches and if you want to do this you're going to take your real red blend marker and you're just going to ru run it over the twine 
and then you're going to roll it to get to another side. Okay. And you do want to be careful. It can stain your fingers, but just kind of run it over. You'll want to do this with some scratch paper underneath. It's just a really easy way to get coordinating colored twine. You can do this with any white ribbon. I love the blend markers because they just are really versatile. Okay, so once you've got them it all colored, then you do want to try and dry it. And what I'm going to do is take a tissue or you can take a paper towel and you're just going to squeeze it through and pull and that's going to kind of pull out any of the extra ink that's in that twine okay you can also hit it with your heat tool if you want to dry quickly All right, so once that's dry, you'll see that it kind of will get firm and straighten out a quite a bit. So it should be pretty easy to string through, but you do want to make sure that that ink's not going to get all over your card. So just make, make sure that it's not still leaching out ink. Then you can put your ends together. Pull it all the way through to one side. I like to do most of my bows on the right side. I don't know why that is, but that's where I usually end up putting them. Oh, I've got a little bit of ink still in this. I can see it coming off on my envelope paper there. So just be super careful with it until it's completely dry. And you'll just tie a bow, just like that. This one's a little bit longer than the other, so I'm just gonna cut it off. And your card is all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me create this fun card today. If you're interested in getting your own paper pumpkin subscription, please use the link in the description box below. If you would like to see written instructions or close-up images on how I created this card, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.